Hare Krishna, my dear devotees. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the Haven, which is located in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. So we're late tonight, forgive me for that. Things happening here. We're, so we'll start right out. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotra by Srila Sanatan Goswami describes the Bhagavatam and glorifies it in the most wonderful way. It goes like this. <clears throat> Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. <clears throat> Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwandoditaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Marika Bando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Manisdaraga Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu Saduta Dain Atini Chuchata Kada Hanamun Chakadachin Mam Premna Rit Kanta Yokspuda O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please. Never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya So we've reached the fourth chapter of the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sati quits her body and we had a break yesterday. We had to, to fix our computer over here, computers. Uh, so we're starting tonight with text 18 and I think it will be a little bit emotional. <clears throat> Sati is still speaking to her father, Daksha, who was completely ignoring her and refused to invite even her husband to the sacrificial ceremony, which is never done. Text 18. <clears throat> Therefore, I shall no longer bear this unworthy body which has been received from you who have blasphemed Lord Shiva. If someone has taken food which is poisonous, the best treatment is to vomit. Whew. Purport. Since Sati was the representation of the external potency of the Lord, it was in her power to vanquish many universes, including many dakshas. But in order to save her husband from the charge that he employed his wife, Sati, to kill Daksha because he could not do so due to his inferior position, she decided to give up her body. Text 19 It is better to execute one's own occupational duty 
than to criticize others. Elevated transcendentalists may sometimes forego the rules and regulations of the Vedas since they do not need to follow them. Just as the demigods travel in space, whereas ordinary men travel on the surface of the earth. Purport. The behavior of the most elevated transcendentalist and that of the most fallen conditioned soul appears to be the same. The elevated transcendentalist can surpass all the regulations of the Vedas, just as the demigods traveling in space surpass all the jungles and rocks on the surface of the globe, although a common man who has no ability to travel in space has to face all those impediments. Although the most dear Lord Shiva appears not to observe all the rules and regulations of the Vedas, he is not affected by such disobedience. But a common man who wants to imitate Lord Shiva is mistaken. A common man must observe all the rules and regulations of the Vedas, which a person who is in the transcendental position does not need to observe. Daksha found fault with Lord Shiva for not observing all the strict rules and regulations of the Vedas. But Sati asserted that he had no need to observe such rules. It is said that for one who is powerful like the sun or the fire, there is no consideration of purity or impurity. The sunshine can sterilize an impure place, whereas if someone else were to pass such a place, he would be affected. One should not try to imitate Lord Shiva. Rather, one should strictly follow one's prescribed occupational duties. One should never vilify a great personality like Lord Shiva. Text 20 In the Vedas, there are directions for two kinds of activities. Activities for those who are attached to material enjoyment and activities for those who are materially detached. In consideration of these two kinds of activities, there are two kinds of people who have different symptoms. If one wants to see two kinds of activities in one person, that is contradictory. But both kinds of activities may be neglected by a person who is transcendentally situated. Purport. The Vedic activities are so designed that the conditioned soul who has come to enjoy the material world may do so under direction so that at the end he becomes detached from such material enjoyment and is eligible to enter into the transcendental position. The four different spiritual orders, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sannyas, gradually train a person to come to the platform of transcendental life. The activities and dress of a Grihastha or householder are different from those of a Sannyasi, one in the renounced order of life. It is impossible for one person to adopt both orders. A sannyasi cannot act like a householder, nor can a householder act like a sannyasi. But above these two kinds of persons, one who engages in material activities and one who has renounced material activities, there is the person who is transcendental to both. Lord Shiva is in the transcendental position because as stated before, he is always absorbed in the thought of Lord Vasudev within himself. Therefore, neither the activities of the grihastha nor those of the sannyasi in the renounced order can be applicable for him. He is in the Paramahansa stage, the highest perfectional stage of life. The transcendental position of Lord Shiva is also explained in Bhagavad Gita, 252-53. It is stated there 
that when one engages in the transcendental service of the Lord by performing activities without fruitive results, one is elevated to the transcendental position. At that time, he has no obligation to follow the Vedic injunctions or the different rules and regulations of the Vedas. When one is above the directions of the Vedic ritualistic injunctions for attaining different allurements and is fully absorbed in transcendental thought, which means thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service, one is in the position called Buddhi Yoga or Samadhi, ecstasy. For a person who has attained this stage, neither the Vedic activities for realizing material enjoyment nor those for renunciation are applicable. Text 21 My dear Father, the opulence we possess is impossible for either you or your flatterers to imagine. For persons who engage in fruitive activities by performing great sacrifices are concerned with satisfying their bodily necessities by eating foodstuff offered as a sacrifice. We can exhibit our opulences simply by desiring to do so. This can be achieved only by great personalities who are renounced, self-realized souls. Purport Sati's father was under the impression that he was exalted in both prestige and opulence and that he had offered his daughter to a person who was not only poor but devoid of all culture. Her father might have been thinking that although she was a chaste woman, greatly adherent to her husband, her husband was in a deplorable condition. To counteract such thoughts, Sati said that the opulence possessed by her husband could not be understood by materialistic persons like Daksha and his followers who were flatterers and engaged in fruitive activities. Her husband's position was different. He possessed all opulences, but he did not like to exhibit them. Therefore, such opulences are called avyakta, or unmanifested. But if required, simply by willing, Lord Shiva can show his wonderful opulences and such an event is predicted here, for it would soon occur. The opulence Lord Shiva possesses for enjoy, is, re, or is re, enjoyable in renunciation and love of God, not in material exhibition of sense gratific gratificatory methods. Such opulences are possessed by personalities like the Kumaras, Narada, and Lord Shiva, not by others. In this verse, the performers of Vedic rituals are condemned. They have been described here as Duma Vartmabhi, those who maintain themselves on the remnants of sacrificial foodstuff. There are two kinds of foodstuff offered in sacrifice. One kind is food offered in fruitive ritualistic sacrifices, and the other, the best, is food offered to Vishnu. Although in all cases Vishnu is the chief deity on the sacrificial altar, the performers of fruitive rituals aim to satisfy various demigods to achieve in return some material prosperity. Real sacrifice, however, is to satisfy Lord Vishnu, and the remnants of such sacrifices are beneficial for advancement in devotional service. The process of elevation by performing sacrifices other than those aimed at Vishnu is very slow and therefore it has been condemned in this verse. Vishwanath Chakabarti has described the ritualistic performers to be like crows because crows delight in eating the remnants of food which has been thrown into the dustbin. 
all the brahmanas who were present for the sacrifice were also condemned by, by sati. Whether or not King Daksha and his flatterers could understand the position of Lord Shiva, Sati wanted to impress upon her father that he should not think her husband to be without opulence. Sati, being the devoted wife of Lord Shiva, offers all kinds of material opulences to the worshippers of Lord Shiva. This fact is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto. Lord Shiva's worshippers sometimes appear more opulent than the worshippers of Lord Vishnu because Durga, or Sati, being the superintendent in charge of material affairs, can offer all material opulences to the worshippers of Lord Shiva in order to glorify her husband. Whereas the worshippers of Vishnu are meant for spiritual elevation and therefore their material opulence is sometimes found to decrease. These points, these points are very nicely discussed in the 10th canto. Text 22 You are an offender at the lotus feet of Lord Shiva and unfortunately I have a body produced from yours. I am very much ashamed of our bodily relationship and I condemn myself because my body is contaminated by a relationship with a person who is an offender at the lotus feet of the greatest personality. Purport Lord Shiva is the greatest of all devotees of Lord Vishnu. It is stated, Vaishnavana Yata Shambhu. Shambhu, Lord Shiva, is the greatest of all devotees of Lord Vishnu. In the previous verses, Sati has described that Lord Shiva is always in a transcendental position because he is situated in pure Vasudeva. Vasudeva is the state from which Krishna, Vasudeva, is born. So Lord Shiva is the greatest devotee of Lord Krishna. And Sati's behavior is exemplary because no one should tolerate blasphemy against Lord Vishnu or his devotee. Sati is aggrieved, not for her personal association with Lord Shiva, but because her body is related with that of Daksha, who is an offender at Lord Shiva's lotus feet. She feels herself to be condemned because of the body given by her father, Daksha. Text 23 Because of our family relationship, when Lord Shiva addresses me as Dakshayani, I at once become morose, and my jolliness and smile at once disappear. I feel very much sorry that my body, which is just like a bag, has been produced by you. I shall therefore give it up. Purport. The word Dakshayani means the daughter of King Daksha. Sometimes when there was relaxed conversation between husband and wife, Lord Shiva used to call Sati the daughter of King Daksha. And because this very word reminded her about her family relationship with King Daksha, she at once became ashamed because Daksha was an incarnation of all offenses. Daksha was the embodiment of envy, for he unnecessarily blasphemed the great personality, Lord Shiva. Simply upon hearing the word Dakshayani, she felt afflicted because of reference to the context, because her body was the symbol of all the offensiveness with which Daksha was endowed. I'll read that again. Simply hearing the word Dakshayani, she felt afflicted because of reference to the context, because her, because her body was the symbol of all the offensiveness with which Daksha was endowed. Since her body was constantly a source of unhappiness, she decided 
to give it up. Text 24. Maitreya the sage told Vidura, O annihilator of enemies, while thus speaking to her father, in the arena of sacrifice, Sati sat down on the ground and faced north. Dressed in saffron garments, she sanctified herself with water and closed her eyes to absorb herself in the process of mystic yoga. Purport. It is said that when a man desires to quit his body, he dresses in saffron garments. Therefore it appears that Sati changed her dress, <clears throat> indicating that she was going to quit the body given her by Daksha. Daksha was Sati's father, so instead of killing Daksha, she decided that she, it would be better to destroy the part of his body which was hers. Thus, she decided to give up the body by, of Daksha by the yogic process. Sati was the wife of Lord Shiva, who was known as Yogeshwara, the best among all yogis, because he knows all the mystic processes of yoga. So it appeared that Sati also knew them. Either she learned yoga from her husband, or she was enlightened because she was the daughter of such a great king as Daksha. The perfection of yoga is that one can give up one's body or release oneself from the embodiment of material elements according to one's desire. Yogis who have attained perfection are not subject to death by natural laws. Such perfect yogis can leave the body whenever they desire. Generally, the yogi first of all becomes mature in controlling the air passing within the body thus bringing the soul to the top of the brain. Then, when the, when the body bursts into flames, the yogi can go anywhere he likes. This yoga system recognizes the soul, and thus it is distinct from the so-called yoga process for controlling the cells of the body, which has been discovered in the modern age. The real yoga process accepts the transmigration of the soul, from one, from one planet to another, or one body to another. And it appears from this incident that Sati wanted to transfer her soul to another body or sphere. Text 25 First of all, she sat in the required sitting posture, and then she carried the life air upwards and placed it in the position of equilibrium near the navel. Then she raised her life air, mixed with intelligence, to the heart, and then gradually towards the pulmonary passage, and from there to between the eyebrows. Purport. The yogic process is to control the air passing within the body in different places called Shat Chakra, the six circles of air circulation. The air is raised from the abdomen to the navel, from the navel to the heart, from the heart to the throat, and from the throat to between the eyebrows, and from between the eyebrows to the top of, of the cerebrum, cerebrum. That is the sum and substance of practicing yoga. Before practicing the real yoga system, one has to practice the sitting postures, because this helps in the breathing, breathing exercises which control the airs going upwards and downwards. This is a great technique which one has to practice to attain the highest perfectional stage of yoga. But such practice is not meant for this age. No one in this age can attain the perfectional stage of such yoga. But people indulge in practicing city po sitting postures which more or less which is more or less a gymnastic process by such bodily gymnastics one may develop good circulation and may thereby therefore keep one's body fit but if one simply restricts oneself to that gymnastic process one cannot attain 
the highest perfectional stage. The yoga process as described in the Keshava Shruti prescribes how one can control his living force according to his desire and transmigrate from one body to another or from one place to another. In other words, yoga practice is not meant to keep the body fit. Any transcendental process of spiritual realization automatically helps one keep the body fit. For it is the spirit soul that keeps the body always fresh. As soon as the spirit soul is out of the body, the material body immediately begins to decompose. Any spiritual process keeps the body fit without separate endeavor. But if one takes it to the to but if one takes it that the ultimate aim of yoga is to maintain the body, then he is mistaken. The real perfection of yoga is elevation of the soul to the highest position or the liberation of the soul from material entanglement. Some yogis try to elevate the soul to higher planetary systems, whereas the, where, where the standard of life is different from that of this planet and where the material comforts, lifespan, and other facilities for self-realization are greater. And some yogis endeavor to elevate the soul to the spiritual world, the spiritual Vaikuntha planets. The Bhakti Yoga process directly elevates the soul to the spiritual planets, where life is eternally blissful and full of knowledge. Therefore, Bhakti Yoga is, is considered to be the greatest of all yoga systems. 26. <clears throat> Thus, in order to give up her body, which had been so res respectfully and affectionately seated on the lap of Lord Shiva, who was worshipped by great sages and saints, Sati, due to anger towards her father, began to meditate on the fiery air within the body. Purport. Lord Shiva is described herein as the best of all great souls. Although Sati's body was born of Daksha, Lord Shiva used to adore her by sitting her on his, on his lap. This is considered a great token of respect. Thus Sati's body was not ordinary, but still she decided to give it up because it was the source of unhappiness because of its connection with Daksha. This severe example set by Sati is to be followed. One should be extremely careful about associating with persons who are not respectful to the higher authorities. It is instructed, therefore, in the Vedic literature that one should always be free from the association of atheists and non-devotees and should try to associate with devotees. For by the association of a devotee, one can be elevated to the platform of self-realization. This injunction is stressed in many places in Srimad Bhagavatam. If one wants to be liberated from the clutches of material existence, then one has to associate with great souls. And if one wants to continue one's material existential life, then one may associate with persons who are materialistic. The materialistic way of life is based on sex life. Thus, both becoming addicted to sex life and associating with persons who are addicted to sex life are condemned in the Vedic literature because such association will simply interfere with one's spiritual progress. However, association with great personalities, devotees who are great souls, will elevate one to the spiritual platform. Sati Devi, 
decided to quit the body she had obtained from Daksha's body and she wanted to transfer herself to another body so that she might have completely uncontaminated association with Lord Shiva. Of course, it, it is understood that in her next life she would take birth as the daughter of the Himalayas, Parvati, and then she would again accept Lord Shiva as her husband. Sati and Lord Shiva are eternally related. Even after she changes her body, their relationship is never broken. Text 27 she con Sati concentrated all her meditation on the holy lotus feet of her husband, Lord Shiva, who is the supreme spiritual master of all the world. Thus she became completely cleansed of all taints of sin and quit her body in a blazing fire by meditation on the fiery elements. Hare Krishna. Purport. Sati at once thought of the lotus feet of her husband, Lord Shiva, who was one of the three great personalities of Godhead in charge of the management of the material world. And simply by meditating on his lotus feet, she derived such great pleasure that she forgot everything in relationship with her body. This pleasure was certainly material because she gave up her body for another body that was also material. But by this example, we can appreciate the devotee's pleasure in concentrating his mind and attention on the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu, or Krishna. There is such transcendental bliss in simply meditating on the lotus feet of the Lord that one can forget everything but the Lord's transcendental form. This is the perfection of yogic samadhi or ecstasy. <clears throat> In this verse, it is stated that by such meditation she became free from all contamination. What was that contamination? The contamination was her concept of the body derived from daksha. But she forgot that bodily relationship in trance. But she forgot got that bodily relationship in trance. The purport is that when one becomes free from all bodily relationships within this material world and simply places himself in the position of an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord, it is to be understood that all contempt the combination com it is to be understood we'll read that again. This is too much distraction this morning. I'll turn it down. Okay. <clears throat> the purport is that when one becomes free from all bodily relationships within this material world and simply places himself in the position of an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord, it is to be understood that all the contamination of, this, of his material attachment has been burned by the blazing fire of transcendental ecstasy. It is not necessary for one to manifest a blazing fire externally, for if one forgets all his bodily relationships within this material world and becomes situated in his spiritual identity, it is said that one has been freed from all material contamination by the blazing fire of yogic samadhi or ecstasy. That is the topmost perfection of yoga. If one keeps his bodily relationships within this material world and poses himself as a great yogi, he is not a bona fide yogi. In Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.15 it is stated, Yat kirtanam yat smaranam Simply by chanting the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, simply by remembering the lotus feet of Krishna, simply by offering prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is immediately freed from material contamination, the material, the material bodily con concept. 
by the blazing fire of ecstasy. This effect takes place immediately without a second's delay. According to Jeev, Sri Jiva Goswami, that Sati quit her body means that she gave up within her heart the, her relationship with Daksha. Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur also comments that since Sati is the superintendent deity of the external potency, when she quit her body, she did not get a spiritual body, but simply transferred from the body she had received from Daksha. Other commentators also say that she immediately transferred herself into the womb of Menaka, her future mother. She gave up the body she had received from Daksha and immediately transferred herself to another, better body. But this does not mean that she got a spiritual body. And that brings us to 805, believe it or not. We'll start with text 28 tomorrow and end our reading for tonight. Hare Krishna. And we will wait for the... I hope I wasn't too late and everybody didn't go away. Hare Krishna. <laughs> we'll wait for the reflections of the assembled sages. Okay, our landlord, Radharaman, is going to bless us with his reflections. Well, uh, thank you, Maharaj. It, it, it's actually just um, one section from the 26th purport, the 26th mm. verse purport, that <coughs> just seemed to be particularly poignant. I'll just read one part of it. This injunction is stressed in many places in Srimad Bhagavatam. If one wants to be liberated from the clutches of material existence, then one has to associate with great souls. And if one wants to continue one's material existential life, then one must, may associate with persons who are materialistic. The materialistic way of life is based on sex life. Thus, both becoming addicted to sex life and associating with persons who are addicted to sex life are condemned in Vedic literature because such association will simply interfere with one's spiritual progress. However, association with great personalities, devotees who are great souls, will ele elevate one to the spiritual platform. It's interesting that Daksha externally appeared to be a great soul. In Shiva, Lord Shiva appeared to be uh, not such a great soul externally but as we heard from Sati he's the most opulent and he can exhibit opulences just by thinking about them so and he's and, and, and then Prabhupada commented and that was about to happen so we'll hear tomorrow what happened as a result of this yes if we don't associate with devotees, and especially if we don't associate with exalted devotees, then our continued existence in this material world is guaranteed. And if we associate with exalted devotees, then our the success of our human life is guaranteed. Hare Krishna. Thank you for that. The essence of spiritual life. There's a verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that call that says that that uses the word, I don't remember this, the, all of the Bengali, but the word mula is in the verse, and it means root. And the, the, the meaning of the, of the Bengali is that the root of making advancement in spiritual life is the association of advanced devotees. And it also says that that includes advanced devotees. It's for everyone, even those who are advanced.
Hare Krishna. Uh, from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati, Hare Krishna. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, let the sacred sounds rain down on our thirsty hearts. <laughs> Such an artist she is. Hare Krishna. And from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled sages, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada in your daily reading service of Sri the Prabhupada's books, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Jai Sri Man Bhagavatam. Thank you. This is from Paramananda. Hey Paramananda, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. And from Sri Devi Dasi. Sri Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna to you too. Hare Krishna Maharaj. And from Bhakta Rupa. Yes, Bhakta Rupa. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for reading. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. This is so dramatic. Such a cinematic scene. Mm. Sati and saffron bursting into flames in front of so many great personalities. Mm. Daksha must have felt so humiliated to see this. He must have regretted using such strong words against Lord Shiva. Well, I think we're going to hear that it took a little bit more than that to uh, convince Daksha. <laughs> he was so proud. But we'll hear how Daksha finally saw the, saw the light by the grace of Lord Shiva and his opulences. Next is from Ananga Manjari. Hare Krishna, Ananga Manjari. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Hare Bo, to you too. And this is from Bhakti Peter. Yes, Bhakti Peter. Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Hare Krishna to everyone assembled. Thank you for reading. In text 25's purport, what does Prabhupada mean by the word sphere, where he says Sati wanted to transfer her soul to another body or sphere? Sphere means a different um, environment she took a birth uh, from the father who was a materialistic person but very very elevated uh, but materialistic but she's going to go into another sphere another material body but also in another sphere which means a different uh, quality of body, a different quality of life, appearing, you know, uh, as as the daughter of the Himalaya mountains. That's what it means by different sphere. Next is from Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Yes, Ananda Murti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Today I heard that Sati became become completely free from material conception by the blazing fire of mystic power. Sati was a great devotee of Lord Shiva, and she is Parvati. So that means she is not a Jivatma. She's an expansion. She, she's the reflection. She has a material body. It says it clearly. But even though she has a material body, she's not an ordinary jiva. She is the reflection or, or the shadow of the goddess of fortune, Yoga Maya. She's Mahamaya the personification of Mahamaya, whereas Yogamaya is the spiritual uh, aspect. And 
this is also from Ananda Murti. Yes, Ananda Murti. Today I also heard, quote, Simply by chanting the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, simply by remembering the lotus feet of Krishna, simply by offering prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is immediately freed from material contamination, the material bodily concept, by the blazing fire of ecstasy. This effect ta takes place immediately without a second's delay. Yes, that means you may have to wait a long time to achieve that perfection. But once you achieve that perfection, you get the results immediately. And it also means that potentially you can get that result immediately at any time if you fully surrender. I mean, fully surrendered means that there's nothing else in your mind but Krishna. This is a very rare stage to achieve. Very rare. This is from Bhakti and Maxine. Yes, Bhakti and Maxine. Hare Krishna, dearest Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. What does it mean by Sati didn't receive a spiritual body? She, she receives a material body. Sati's body is material. And from Simple as that. Hare Krishna. That's from Sarvagya? Yes, Sarvagya. Maharaj, Sati also, she will get moksha or she will serve internally as material world in charge she's, she's eternally uh, the personification of the material energy of course when the material energy is withdrawn she also is withdrawn so in that sense it's not eternally but she's an eternal soul and she appears uh, as an expansion of yoga maya when comes time to create the material world. She is the one who receives all of the souls all at once from Lord Shiva. At that time when Mahavishnu glances, the glance of, Ma, of, of, of Lord Vishnu includes Sada Shiva. And when that Sada Shiva, which is an aspect of uh, Lord Vishnu, touches the material energy, then he is transformed into Shiva. And he injects all of the souls into the womb of Parvati, or Durga, or Sati. Pranav, Handa, Pranav, Pralav, pra Pranav, 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 Handa, Pranavanda, oh, Haribo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada and his beautiful books. While reading, Sri the Prabhupada mentioned that Lord Shiva meditates on Vasudev, the state from which Krishna or Vasudev is born. I was unable to understand this. Repeat it again. While reading, Srila Prabhupada mentioned that Lord Shiva meditates on Vasudev, the state from which Krishna or Vasudev is born. It's a state of consciousness. Vasudev means Shuddhasattva, and it, it's that state of consciousness which attracts Lord Krishna. Vasudev also means all-pervading. So when that Shuddha is present, then Krishna is attracted. Therefore, Lord Balaram 
went before Krishna to the womb of Devaki and prepared it for Krishna's presence. That means uh, Vasudev, the Shuddhasama atmosphere was created in the womb of, in, in the heart and, and in the womb of Devaki. And it was Vasudev himself who, uh, whose heart attracted Lord Krishna because he was in Shuddhasattva. Hare Krishna. I have a second question as well. He says, Sati has a material body. Does it mean that she will have to go through birth, death, old age and disease? Well, she's just demonstrated how she has to go through death, didn't she? Or the process of leaving the body. She's already de demonstrated it right there in this pastime. So that answers the question. Next is from Subara. Yes, Subara. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for your daily readings. Thank you for giving your association and keeping us on the spiritual track. Daily readings, Ki Jai. Hari Bo, Hare Krishna, thank you. And this is from Gopi Ramana. Gopi Ramana. Oh. Thank you for your association, Maharaj. I am eternally indebted. Your altar looks extremely attractive this evening, and the butterflies look especially ecstatic. Hare, Hare Krishna. I thought so too. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> we give the credit to Abhay Das Brahmachari Pujari. <laughs> he, he decorates them and cleans every day. And he makes these fantastic, fantastic vases. Going to the neighbors. <laughs> and from uh, Shayan. Shayan. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Oh, it's Aravind. Aravind here. Oh, Aravind. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Please, can you help clarify? Sati is Mahamaya? If so, why the need to set herself on fire? Could she not bewilder Daksha? She could have killed Daksha. She could have bewildered him. She could have done anything she wanted. But it's described in the verses themselves and in the purports. She did this to humiliate Daksha in front of everyone, to expose him for what he actually is. That is her sweet will. Hare Krishna. And from Daitari Hari? Yes, Daitari Hari. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. I really appreciated that last point. That quote, simply by chanting the holy name, remembering the lotus feet, or offering prayers of the Supreme Lord, the one is immediately freed from material contamination, the material concept of life, by the blazing fire of ecstasy. This effect takes place immediately without a second's notice. How can those of us not so advanced comprehend this power of Krishna consciousness? You can't can't comprehend it but you can you can understand how wonderful it is and you can aspire for it what this means is that when you chant and hear completely purely without offense the holy name of the lord and the pastimes of the lord then you immediately become free from material existence and the lord may have service for you to do and therefore he may 
keep you in the material world rather than take you back to God immediately. But the actual effect is to become liberated from material existence immediately. This is explained in many places in the Vedas. But that means one has to have achieved, you know, pure Krishna consciousness. One has to become completely uh, detached from material uh, enjoyment and from material uh, circumstances and material uh, con conditioning. Next is from Ananga Manjari. Yes, Ananga Manjari. In 4, 427 purport, quote, it is not necessary for one to manifest a blazing fire externally, unquote. Please, what does that mean? It means that inside your body there is fire. To set yourself on fire, you don't need an external source of fire. There's fire already in your body. And by practicing the yoga system. This was also done by uh, Dhritarashtra and by other personalities uh, described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, it's the yogi perfection. There's fire in the body. You digest uh, food by, the, by fire. And the process of intensifying that fire to the point where it bursts into flame from inside is the process that's being talked about. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. From Ananda Murti. Yes, Ananda Murti. Yesterday I distributed 10 Bhagavad Gita on the street, 44 Bhagavad Gitas at three different Indian restaurants. During distribution on the street, I also met one person who distributes his own master's book. He says, You are wonderfully distributing, but I can't distribute well. Almost people deny and don't take books. His master's teaching seems to be kind of Vedic teachings, and that master gave a secret mantra to him. <laughs> I gave him a mantra card, and he chanted the Maha Mantra and explained about this mantra. He surprised. He was surprised and said, That's my secret mantra. He said, Wow, this is free? <laughs> yeah. People want to be cheated. That's the point. This is the point of this example. People want to be cheated, and therefore the material nature provides the cheaters. The cheaters come into existence because of the soul's desire, the materialistic soul's desires to be cheated. And she said he but, he do, but, he, but it also says, the Vedas also say, that if a person is actually sincere, even if he becomes uh, bewildered or distracted, you know, uh, by a cheater, if he's sincere, he will eventually see through that sincerity. So I think that Ananda Murti would became an instrument to show that to this person, hopefully, Hare Krishna. I he, mean, hopefully he'll accept it. He bought Bhagavad Gita and he gave me his master's book for free. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. Thanks a lot. Keep it up, Ananda Murti. You're doing great. All the all the devotees are in awe of your devotional service. Next is from Sarvagya. Sarvagya. He says, Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your reply. It is difficult to understand spiritual internal things here in the material world. It's impossible unless you become purified. from Dietary Hari. Daivyesha Gunamayi Mama Maya Doratyaya. This verse in the Gita says 
that the material energy is Krishna's energy. Therefore, it is duratiya, it is insurmountable. It's not p possible for a soul, an individual soul, to, to surmount it. But then, mame vaye prapajyantai, maya metam tarantate, just by actually surrendering to Krishna, giving oneself to Krishna completely, you immediately become free from the influence of material energy because that material energy belongs to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anything to add to Hare Hare? Yes, that Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Ananda Murti beat me to the question I wanted to ask. <laughs> But I really appreciated the eloquently presented chastisement that Sati gave to Daksha. Something in me really enjoys seeing bad guys put in their place. Yeah. I think I enjoy this in the preceding chapters a little too much, I think. That's why the movie industry always has the bad guy, and the bad guy gets it. Because everyone can go and get into ecstasy. Because actually inside the heart, you know, they know they don't want the bad things. They want the good things. They just don't know where to look. <coughs> That's all. From Koladvipati. Yes, Koladvipati. <coughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for reading tonight. A very important lesson to learn from Sati, quitting her body. Quote, this severe example by Sati should be followed. Unquote. So we should be very careful and quick to avoid association with persons who are offensive to devotees. Also appreciated, quote, any transcendental process of spiritual realization automatically helps one keep the body fit, for it is the spirit soul that keeps the body always fresh. That doesn't mean that a person who becomes <coughs> Krishna conscious, you know, becomes free from disease. He still, everyone has to go through the process of leaving the body. Everyone, in one way or another. Uh, sati is particularly powerful, so she chooses this way. But uh, even liberated souls have to leave the body and, has, and go through certain symptoms while leaving the body. Hare Krishna. Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Just so I understand it correctly, even though Lord Shiva advised her not to go, can we conclude that Sati did the right thing by going to her father's house and exposing Daksha's offense to Lord Shiva? Was exposing his offense the right thing to do? Of course, this is the pastime. This is pastimes. That's why it says that every syllable of the, of the Bhagavatam, you know, emotes, emits uh, the, an ocean of prema. Every pastime is a pastime of the Lord because it teaches us how to go to the Lord. Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava. So if if you if you are witness to what to speak of how intimately Sati was involved with this offender, she wanted to give the lesson to everybody. It seems like she's just giving a lesson to Daksha, but everyone gets the lesson. We'll see what happens to everyone. <laughs> everyone who was present, who heard that of, you know, offense and didn't protest. She says thank you. Hare Krishna. And Nanga Mandra also says thank you very much. Hare Krishna. And from Gopi Ramana? Yes, Gopi Ramana. I liked hearing about how by practicing devotional service in this material world one can access the kingdom of God. I find this to be extremely inspiring. <laughs> Your servant. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. And thank everyone for all these wonderful reflections tonight. 
ecstatic. We heard that the day before yesterday, last time I read, the sound somehow or other got lost when it went into the YouTube. So we're going to try to uh, fix that tonight and Abai will send it uh, directly to YouTube from here. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, samabeda bhakta vinda ki jai, gor premanandi hari hari bo. <coughs> see you tomorrow night, same time, same place, same topic, and we see what is going to be the result of the serious Vaishnava Parad that was made by Daksha. This is just the beginning, Hare Krishna.